there she stood with her arms outstretched side to side as if she was ready to take off in flight. And she was stepping quickly from side to side as if she was a goalie on guard, protecting the space that must not be breached. And she had a fierce look of determination in her eyes. She would not be backing down. And I looked on with horror at my three-year-old daughter, who was fiercely standing in front of her toy box. And so I promptly scooped her up so that we could have a talk together about how we behave when it's time to share our toys. <laughs> Anyone else ever been there in a moment like that? The truth is, the behavior that I saw in my sweet daughter uh, was quite normal because she's three and she's good at it. <laughs> we recently had friends visiting and they brought with them their one and a half year old son and I watched as my daughter's instinct was to protect her toys, hence her goalie stance in front of her toy box. And what I saw in her was a misdirected focus. That's why I scooped up my normally sweet, loving daughter in a moment like that so that we could have a talk together. Because I wanted to invite her to a different focus. Because in a moment like that, she was focused on herself. She was focused on her toys, mine. That was the message in her heart. And she was thinking about her interests and her rights and her needs. And what I wanted for her in that moment was to divert her focus. I wanted to give her a, a new source of attention. And I wanted her, rather than thinking about her toys, I wanted her to begin thinking about her new friend and how to express kindness to this new friend. See, in a moment like that, what I was attempting to do was to call my daughter to a higher level of functioning. You know, the truth is, for all of us as humans, we have moments in our lives when we need to redirect our focus, when we need to pause and and consider where we're focusing, and sometimes we too need to be called to a higher level of functioning. And so often when we open the word of God, we discover that, that God's word does just that for us. It's an invitation to, to change our focus and to begin to reveal where we're focusing our energy. So I welcome you back to this July series called Foolproof. As we study together the wisdom of Proverbs, as we read through the book day by day. And each week, each Sunday, we're going to be looking at a different theme that we find there in the book of Proverbs. There's so much wisdom in the book. And goodness, we need that these days. Because I know these are difficult days right now. There is a lot going on. In fact, I think for many of us, words that come to mind are weary and frustrated, perhaps a sense of overload that we feel. There's so much going on in our world, and I also know there is so much that's going on in our own personal lives. And here's what I know to be true. When we are in these moments, when we are weary and frustrated, when we are overloaded by all that's happening around us, I know that in these moments, it can bring out less than the best in us. When we are weary and frustrated, that becomes a ripe environment in our own lives for us to be short-tempered aggressive, hostile, petty. So today, let me speak directly and, and gently about that reality, that reality that we all face as human beings. And together, we, we're looking at the way that the scripture speaks to that and the way that we are challenged. And 
It's so important that we're aware of this in times like these, that these become moments in our lives that, that God can really do a great work in our hearts. The more challenging the situation we are in, the more potential there is for us to encounter Jesus and have moments in our lives when God forms our hearts. So friends, let's not miss this. I know these are challenging days. I know there are a lot of adjustments that we're making in our lives and ways that we are being stretched, but I also know that God can use these moments to do tremendous things and do hard work in our lives and in our souls. The truth is we all need help in a moment like this. In fact, in the weariness that we may feel, I think a good word that many of us would be longing for is refreshment. Anyone? Could anyone use some refreshment these days? I know that I could. So many of us running on empty and, and wanting to be filled. It's a long, hard season, and so we need hope and help and encouragement. We need some refreshment. So I want to ask today, how do we find refreshment in a challenging season like this? Well, I think that when we are in a point in our lives when we say, I need some refreshment, that one of our instincts might to be uh, to become like our own little goalies in front of our toy boxes. And we start thinking about what's mine and what I need and my interests and what I want because I need some refreshment. But today, as we look at a passage in Proverbs, it challenges us to think about how we experience refreshment in the economy of the kingdom of God. Proverbs uh, chapter 11, verses 25 says this, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Will you listen to that again? A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. See, when we read this passage, we are called to a new focus. And we're invited to divert our attention, to function in a different kind of way. See, in these moments when we find ourselves desperate for refreshment, we often focus on ourselves, our own needs, our own wants. It's all about me, me, me. But this passage in Proverbs is a different invitation. Rather than being served in order to be refreshed, we are invited to serve others. This scripture tells us that in the process of meeting the needs of others, our own needs are met. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. In the Amplified Version, it says, He who waters will himself be watered. Now, this dynamic that we find in this scripture verse is not just a truth that we find in the book of Proverbs. This is a truth that we find throughout scripture. In fact, it's part of what I would call the economy of the kingdom of God. Now, we often talk about the kingdom of God, or scripture sometimes says the kingdom of heaven, and we're invited to recognize that, that there is a spiritual reality that is greater than the physical world in which we live. And this kingdom of God cannot be contained in time and space. It is the reign and rule of God. And as Jesus followers, we are invited to understand ourselves and to live as citizens of the kingdom of God. And when we live in the kingdom of God, we discover that the kingdom of God has different kinds of values. And it also has a different kind of economy. And that's what we see in this scripture passage today. In fact, sometimes we call the kingdom of God upside down because it feels so different than the culture of the world in which we live. This is a kingdom of God perspective. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. That's telling us that, that when we live generously towards others, that means that we are actually participating in the grand design of God's provision. 
that we experience the provision of God when we become a provider for others. There's another uh, example of this that I've always loved in the New Testament. We find it in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And uh, maybe you've read this passage as well. It, and it describes for us uh, what happens when we receive comfort from God. And God uses that comfort that we have received so that we can comfort others. It sounds like this, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves have received from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. You know, I've, I've watched that so many times in the body of Christ. People who have experienced the comfort of God in the midst of very difficult things that they have walked through. And I've watched them use that comfort that they have received to then reach out and comfort others who are also going through difficult times. Have you ever seen that happen? It's a beautiful thing in the body of Christ. In fact, church family, I, I just want to pause for a moment and, and just say that, that in this pandemic season, one of the great joys for me as your pastor has been to see the way that our church family is intentionally caring for one another. Oh, I love hearing the stories of the drive-by celebrations and the cards and the notes and the phone calls and all of the intentionality that's being poured out to share that message. You are not forgotten in this season. I love that about you. I love that that's rooted in the DNA of who we are. And so that's what comes out in a season like this when we can't gather in the same ways that we have been used to gathering. I'm so grateful. What I see is this intentionality in all of you to express your love towards one another. And I see in all of you a sensitivity to the move of the Holy Spirit. You know, God does that in our lives. Sometimes he brings someone to mind for us to pray for them or for us to reach out to them and offer a word of encouragement. And I have watched you be responsive to those prompts of the Holy Spirit. Because the truth is, all of us are commissioned by God to be used by God in the lives of one another. So today, as we think about this passage in uh, the book of Proverbs, it reminds us that where we choose to focus has great power. And I know if, if this is a time in your life when you need some refreshment, when you need some help and you need some perspective, I want to ask you, where is your focus in that? In fact, when we read the book of Proverbs, in some ways the whole book feels like a pointed question. Where's your focus? What are you pursuing? Where are your sights set? What do you value most? What has captured your attention? Where is your focus? This is what Proverbs asks of us. And today we're reminded of the clear challenge that we find. Live generously. What might happen if, if we were to be people who focus on generosity? in growing ways. What could happen if God would grow the generosity that's already in our midst? So I want to ask you today, who do you know in your life who needs some refreshment? Pause right now and, and begin thinking about some people that you know who need some refreshment. It might be someone here in our church family, someone that is here today or someone that isn't here today. It might be one of your neighbors or a coworker, or an extended family member. It might be some of our community leaders who are seeking to navigate in this difficult time. Who do you know who needs some refreshment? And what might happen if we sought to find our own refreshment by being generous with others and helping to refresh them? We can be generous with our words and offer some encouragement. We can use our words to build up one another. 
We can be generous with our resources, with our finances and our possessions. We can be generous with our spirits by believing the best in one another. Can I say that one again? We can be generous in spirit by believing the best in one another. That's so important in these divisive times. We can be generous in prayer by getting on our knees before our Heavenly Father to lift one another up. Those are just a few examples. You can think of many more. There are so many ways that we can be generous. Can you imagine that God wants to refresh you as you refresh others? You know, there is something that happens in us, in our inner being, when we take the focus off of ourselves and on to another person. There's something that happens spiritually in our hearts when we live generously like that. You know, just as a couple weeks ago, I found myself um, in that desperate moment trying to help refocus my sweet three-year-old daughter who was standing blocking her toy box. I think our Heavenly Father has those kinds of moments with us all the time. When he looks at us and, and says, I just long for you to refocus. I long to give you another place to put your energy these days. He invites us, live generously. And when we participate in this kind of kingdom living, we make space for encounters with Jesus. And friends, who knows what God might have in store for us and for others as we live this way. In Matthew chapter 5, in the message from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus commissions us, keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. I know that there are people around you in your life who are struggling, and that you can help them encounter Jesus by being a source of uh, generous refreshment in their lives. How awesome this is. How awesome this is that, that our God, who is the ultimate source of generosity, who provides for all of our needs, who generously refreshes our souls, how awesome that he invites us, little old us, that our great God invites us to participate in his provision, that we can be generous with others. What a great design this is of God, and I'm so grateful for this invitation. Will you stand and let's pray together? Our gracious God, we are so grateful for your beautiful design. God, we thank you for all of the ways that you are so generous with us. Thank you, God, for the ways that you refresh us, for the way that you renew our hearts. God, thank you for seeing us today, for knowing the ways that we are weary and frustrated and on overload. And God, I pray that today and in the days to come, God, would you help us to be generous? Would you help open our eyes to see others around us who need refreshment? Would you prompt us by the power of your Holy Spirit, would you bring names into our lives and give us the courage to reach out and to be generous? And we pray, God, that uh, because we take these steps of faith, we pray that, that in us and through us that we might have some great encounters with Jesus. God, this is our prayer in this season, that your name would be loud and famous in our midst, that many would come to know you. God, help us to be known by the way that we generously love others. We love you, Lord, and it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.